So once you know how to find any of the um, quadrant one angles, we can use this idea of a reference angle and then what we know about the signs of the different functions to evaluate any of the functions that we might need. Now, you might recall that um, when we think about the four quadrants, I always use the phrase, all students take calculus. That's how I remember the signs in the quadrants. Now this is again one, two, three, and four. All students take calculus. The A stands for all. All six of the functions are positive in quadrant one. S stands for sine, which means sine is positive, and its reciprocal function, which is cosecant. T stands for tangent, and then its reciprocal function, which is cotangent. C stands for cosine, and then its reciprocal, which is secant. So the, the, this mnemonic device, all students take calculus, tells you which functions are positive. Everything else in that particular quadrant is going to be negative. Okay, um, so what we're going to look at <clears throat> is we're going to use the reference angle to determine the quadrant one value. That's going to tell us the basically the absolute value of our trig function. And then we're going to use the location of the angle to determine whether the answer should be positive or negative. Now, the good news is we mostly work in radians. I think it's a little bit trickier to figure out with degrees, but um, radians, it's very easy to figure out the reference angle. Now, sine of 300, we need to choose the reference angle for 300. Well, the closest route to get to the x-axis from 300 would be to go straight to 360. So the reference angle here is going to be 60 degrees. I also look at this and recognize that 300 is a multiple of 30 and it's a multiple of 60. Since 60 is bigger, I'm going to go with that. Um, and so that's why we're going to choose 60. So we want to think of the sine of 60 degrees. So you can use that left hand trick, put down your 60 degree finger and we want the bottom fingers. So this is equal to the square root of three over two. Now we have to decide where is 300 degrees? Well, 300 degrees would be in quadrant four. In quadrant four, only the cosine and the secant are positive, which means that in quadrant four, the sine of 300 degrees is going to be negative, okay? So that's why this left-hand trick is so helpful because you only ever have to know your quadrant one angles. And then you just have to know how to kind of count around the unit circle, which is really helpful. So if we look at B, the tangent of five pi fourths, it's really easy, we're talking about pi fourths, so that's gonna be our reference angle. In quadrant one, the tangent of pi fourths is one. But five pi fourths is gonna be in quadrant three. And in quadrant three, the tangent of five pi fourths will also be positive. So the tangent there is also one, positive one. Okay? Um, secant. I don't have a left-hand trick for secant, but I do know that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So that's how I want to think about this. I want to think of 1 over the cosine of whatever this angle is. So negative pi 6, my reference angle is going to be pi 6. If I put down my pi 6 finger, I see that the cosine of pi 6 is the square root of 3 over 2. So that means that the secant of pi 6 is going to be 2 over the square root of 3, which rationalizes to 2 root 3 over 3. Now, negative pi 6 is going to be in quadrant 4 where the secant is also positive. And so we get the exact same answer, 2 root 3 over 3. Lastly, the tangent of 14 pi thirds. Pi thirds is our reference angle here. So remember with the left-hand trick, we put down our pi thirds finger and we flip our hand over. And so I see that the tangent of pi thirds is the square root of three over one. That 
is for just pi thirds. Now, 14 pi thirds, we have to figure out exactly where that is going to land. The way I like to do this is kind of think of this as a mixed number. So 3 goes into 14 4 and 2 thirds times. Well, 4 pi would be 2 trips around the unit circle plus then 2 thirds more, which would put us in quadrant 2. Tangent is negative in quadrant 2. So we get the tangent of 14 pi thirds is negative square root of 3. This is just something that takes time. You'll get faster at it as you go, but it's really, really important that you practice evaluating using the reference angles in this manner rather than simply looking at um, a unit circle. When you take calculus, um, you're not going to have the time to sit and sketch out a unit circle every time. You need to be able to quickly evaluate these functions, so hopefully that helps.